seven types of drugs indicated for glaucoma. What is glaucoma? Glaucoma is a group of eye disorders which are associated with the increased aqueous humor levels within the anterior chamber of the eye. So when these aqueous humor levels are increased, it results in the increased intraocular pressure which when abnormally raised, it may result in the optic nerve damage and a progressive loss of the vision. The main reason for the increased aqueous humor levels within the anterior chamber of the eye is maybe due to increased production of this aqueous humor, otherwise the decreased drainage of the aqueous humor. So any of these can lead to the, the abnormal levels of the aqueous humor which lead to the raised intraocular pressure within the eye. How drugs act in the glaucoma? So one of the goal in the treatment of glaucoma is to decrease the intraocular pressure. The intraocular pressure can be decreased by decreasing the production of the aqueous humor, otherwise by increasing the outflow of the aqueous humor. So the drugs used in the glaucoma can act by either decreasing the production or by increasing the outflow and few of the drugs can decrease both the production as well as increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. So in this video let us see what are the different types of uh, drugs used in the treatment of glaucoma and how they can affect this uh, intraocular pressure. So first of all let us see what is the role of this autonomic nervous system on the intraocular pressure. So this autonomic nervous system is having mainly two divisions, parasympathetic system and sympathetic system. This parasympathetic system mainly produces pupillary constriction which results in the decreased intraocular pressure. And this action of this parasympathetic system is mediated by M3 receptors which cause the pupillary constriction and reduction of the IOP. On the other hand, sympathetic system can produce a pupillary dilatation and it can act through either alpha or beta receptors and finally it can result in the increased intraocular pressure. So one of the goal in the treatment of this glaucoma is to stimulate the parasympathetic system and inhibit the sympathetic system. Now let us go one by one and let us see what are the drugs used in the treatment of glaucoma. First one direct acting cholinergic agonies. So drugs like pilocarpine and carbacol are included in this category. Among this, the pilocarpine is one of a natural product coming from the pilocarpus species. And these uh, direct acting cholinergic agonists are acting like an agonist on the all the muscarinic receptor, but their action on the eye is attributed to the M3 receptors. So when they act as an agonist on the M3 receptors, which are coupled with the IP3 and diacylglycerol, this produces a pupillary constriction. When the pupils are constricted, the drainage of this aqueous humor through the canal of sclem is going to be improved, which results in the increased outflow of the aqueous humor. So when the aqueous humor is drainage is improved, the intraocular pressure is decreased by these drugs. These drugs can be used in the both open angle as well as narrow angle glaucoma because they are going to increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. And the side effects of these drugs include eye pain, meiosis, that is a pupillary constriction, and blurred vision, headache, or few of the side effects observed with these directly acting cholinergic agonies. Second one is the indirectly acting cholinergic agonies, or nothing but acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So drugs in this category include physostigmine and ecothiopate. Ecothiopate is an irreversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitor which can also be used in the treatment of uh, glaucoma. Again among these physostigmine is one of the drug which is a natural product coming from the physostigma species. And these drugs are going to inhibit the acetylcholinesterase enzyme and this enzyme is having a role in the cleavage of the acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is going to be cleaved into choline plus acetate by this acetylcholinesterase enzyme within the synaptic cleft, thereby the acetylcholine action is going to be reduced. Now as these drugs are going to inhibit this metabolism by inhibiting the acetylcholinesterase enzyme, they can improve the acetylcholine levels, uh, thereby they can increase the cholinergic transmission and increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. So these drugs are also acting like directly acting cholinergic agonist. So the side effects of these drugs are just similar to the directly acting agents. Third type of drugs are the alpha adrenergic agonies. So in this category we include the non-selective 
alpha adrenergic agonists as well as the alpha 2 selective adrenergic agonists. Non selective include the epinephrine and dipivephrine, and alpha 2 selective include the apraclonidine and brimonidine. Among these, uh, dipivephrine is a prodrug of this uh, epinephrine and because of this prodrug formation it increases the corneal permeability thereby it increases the pharmacological action compared with the epinephrine so now let us see this non-selective adrenergic agonist already we have listed out the two drugs epinephrine and dipivephrine how these drugs act these drugs are acting like as agonist on the adrenergic receptors both alpha and beta receptors and because of action on these uh, beta receptors they decrease the aqueous humor production and these drugs can also increase the outflow by action on the alpha receptors. But at the same time, this epinephrine and dipivephrine are the adrenergic agonists which can produce the pupillary dilatation, that is the midriasis. And because of this, they can cause the blocking of the canal of sclem through which the aqueous humor is going to be drainaged out. In this way, these drugs can produce a block of the canal of sclem. So that's why these drugs are not suitable in the narrow angle glaucoma where there is a block in the, the drainage of the aqueous humor. At the same time, these drugs are not uh, suitable in, in patients with asthma and cataract. Uh, and side effects of these drugs include the burning or stinging within the eye and uh, increased heart rate. As these drugs are acting like an agonist, they increase the heart rate and which may produce the tachycardia and raised blood pressure. As these drugs increase the sympathetic stimulation, they also increase the blood pressure and a blurred vision is also observed with these drugs. Alpha-2 selective adrenergic agonists. So two drugs in this category include the aptoclonidine and brimonidine. These two drugs are going to act as an agonist on the alpha-2 receptors and by stimulating these alpha-2 receptors they decrease the cyclic AMP. And when the cyclic AMP is decreased, this decreases the aqueous humor production. In this way, this alpha-2 selective adrenergic agonist can decrease the aqueous humor production, thereby they decrease the intraocular pressure. And these drugs can cause some of the side effects like the redness of the eye, itching within the eye, as well as blurred vision, and irregular heartbeats are observed with this alpha-2 agonist. Fourth one is the beta blockers. And again, the beta blockers can be classified as a non-selective as well as beta-1 selective. So non-selective beta blockers include the timolol, metoprenolol, levobunolol, and cartiolol. On the other hand, beta-1 selective blocker is the beta-xelol. And particularly, the beta-1 selective blocker beta-xelol is preferred when the glaucoma is associated with the ocular hypertension. And beta-1 selective blockers are also suitable in the patients who are having the pulmonary side effects where the non-selective beta blockers produce bronchoconstriction. And beta blockers can act by several mechanisms and one of the important action of these drugs is to decrease the aqueous humor production thereby they decrease the intraocular pressure. Because these drugs are acting like an antihypertensives, one of the important side effects of these drugs is the hypotension that decreases the blood pressure and they can also produce a difficulty in breathing and uh, this side effect is less with the beta-1 selective blockers which selectively act on the cardiac system instead of the bronchial smooth muscle. And uh, as they block the beta receptors, they can also decrease the heart rate leading to bradycardia. Fifth one is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Drugs in this category include the dorzolamide and brinjolamide. These two drugs are given by the topical route and two other drugs like estrogolamide and methajolamide are the drugs which are given by oral route. Now let us see how these carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are working. So within the eye, the carbon dioxide and, and the water are going to be combined to produce the carbonic acid. So this step is mediated by carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Now this uh, carbonic acid can be split into proton and bicarbonate. Here the bicarbonate plays an important role. The bicarbonate is going to increase the aqueous humor production and it also increases the chloride permeability which more produce the aqueous humor. Now these carbonic anhydrase inhibitors can inhibit this uh, formation of the bicarbonate thereby they can control the aqueous humor production. And these drugs can produce few of the side effects like uh, burning in the eyes, metallic taste and 
increase urination because this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are acting like a weak uh, diuretics they can also increase the frequency of urination in the patients sixth type of drugs are the prostaglandin analogs so drugs in this category include the latanoprost travoprost bimetoprost and tafluprost all the drugs ending with the prost indicates the prostaglandin analogs all these prostaglandins are just the act like an analogs of the PGF2, thereby they increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. And nowadays, these prostaglandin analogs are one of the first line drugs uh, in the treatment of the glaucoma. And these drugs can produce side effects like the burning in the eyes, darkening of the eyelids is one of the specific side effects of these prostaglandin analogs, and they can also produce some blurred vision as observed with the other types of drugs. Seventh category of drugs is the Rho kinase inhibitors. So one of the drugs is the nitazodil. This drug is going to inhibit the Rho kinase, which is one of a signaling pathway, thereby it is going to decrease the aqueous humor production. And again, this drug produces the redness of the eye and blurred vision as a few of the side effects. How these drugs are given? Now we have seen the list of drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma. And these drugs can be given by two routes. One is a topical route and the second is the oral route. Topical route is highly preferred because of the, the local effects it can produce as well as the minimization of the systemic side effects. Most of the category of drugs are given by topical route. They include this cholinergic agents, both directly acting as well as indirectly acting, as well as adrenergic agonists, beta blockers, prostaglandins, Rho kinase inhibitors and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. All these category of drugs are given by topical route. But few of these carbonic anhydrase inhibitors can also be given by the oral route. So carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which are given by oral route include estazolamide and methazolamide. And apart from these drugs, few of these osmotic agents like the mannitol, urea and glycerin can also be given by oral route. These osmotic agents are going to increase osmotic pressure which results in the increased drainage of the aqueous humor. In this way, these are the different category of the drugs which are used in the treatment of glaucoma and drugs used in the glaucoma can decrease the production of this aqueous humor or increase outflow of the aqueous humor and few of the drugs work by both of these mechanisms. And one of the main goal in the treatment of glaucoma is to reduce the intraocular pressure which reduces the chance of optical nerve damage and a progressive vision loss.